we're going to talk about how to find the radius of a star. So it's helpful uh, because there's actually not anything new to show you. That's actually all stuff we've already seen in the course before. So we just have to try to remember what is a Stefan Boltzmann's law. This is all related to um, black bodies, for example. Remember this idea that, uh, actually maybe we'll do this one here. This is actually Wien's displacement law first. So if um, a star acts like a black body, for example, then we have this equation lambda max times t equals uh, 2.90 times 10 to the minus 3, for example. So this is something that tells you about um, if you know a uh, the peak wavelength of a star, so that you know the, the wavelength at which it has its peak intensity, um, then you can find its surface temperature. Or you can find the surface temperature, or if you know the temperature, you can find the peak wavelength and so on. So let's do the uh, Stefan Boltzmann's law as well. That's the one that says that luminosity of a star is just equal to uh, this constant right here times A times T to the fourth. These are just two things that you should sort of remember from before. There's this one right here, and then there's this one right here. But the reason why I like this one right here is because, well, keep in mind, I put this first one because it's related to the surface temperature right here. So let's define some stuff here. First of all, this A, that's the surface area of a sphere, which, by the way, that's equal to 4 times pi times r squared. That's the radius of a sphere here. So this is a three-dimensional sphere here. So if you can imagine, there's some sort of, I don't know, I'm really bad at drawing, but do you get this idea right here, something like this right here? So some sort of, you know, it's supposed to look like a sphere. I don't know, I might have made it worse. In any case, uh, so this is a, supposed to be a sphere, like a three-dimensional, you know, ball. And this would be a star, basically, and this is its radius. So this A is the surface area of a sphere, so that's 4 pi r squared. So that means, then, that we could say that L equals sigma times, uh, and actually, instead of sigma, I'll just put the 4 pi r squared first. So 4 pi r squared, I'll just put the A first, basically, I'm doing A times sigma times t to the fourth. This is, I think, the key one that we're going to use. Now, why is that? Let's maybe define the different variables here. So L is going to be the luminosity of the star, and that's going to be measured in watts. OK, great. We've got R, that's the radius of the star. That's going to be in meters. OK, we've got sigma as well. It's just a constant. So it's actually just 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8. And we've got T. T is actually the surface temperature, or the black body temperature. This, this thing up here that's related, these are the same T here. So we're going to say the surface temperature of the star in Kelvin. What we're saying then is that this star, you know, the, the way it's emitting its light, it's acting like a black body at that temperature. So it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily tell you what the temperature is inside the star. It just tells you, oh, it's glowing, it's behaving like a black body at that temperature. So let's do an example here. We have the star Sirius A, and it's the brightest scar, star in the sky, uh, at least uh, as seen from Earth. So it has a luminosity of 25.4 L with this little symbol here, and that is a symbol we use to denote the sun's luminosity. So we're told it's 3.85 times 10 to the 26 watts. And we know it has a peak wavelength of 291 nanometers. Watch out for that. And the question is, first of all, what's the surface temperature? Well, remember how to find surface temperature from peak wavelength. They are related. We can use this equation, uh, lambda max times t equals uh, 2.90 times 10 to the minus 3. Of course, these are meter Kelvin. So we're going to use this to find the surface temperature. Just get t by itself. So that means I'm going to go, OK, well, t then is just going to be 2.90 times 10 to the minus 3, all that over lambda max. And I know what lambda max is. So I can just put in these numbers. So 2.90 times 10 to the minus 3. All that divided by the maximum uh, wavelength, which is 291. But watch out, nanometers means 10 to the minus 9. So I'm going to do this on my trusty old calculator here. So let's see here. I want a pretty fraction. I'm going to say 2.90 times 10 to the minus 3. All that divided by 291 times 10 to the minus 9. I get this number, so 9965.6, let's just say, uh, Kelvin. Keep in mind, there's lots more decimals. Now, I'm allowed three significant figures here, here, and here, so I'll just use my answer then. I'll just round it to three significant figures. So that means I'll make it 99, let's say 70 then. So 9970 Kelvin. 
So again, what that means then is this star, Sirius, is behaving like a black body that was heated to this temperature. That's at least how it looks. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going on inside of it, but that at least is its surface temperature. Let's keep going. Now we're supposed to find the radius. Now, how do you find the radius of a star? Well, we're going to use this equation. Again, Stefan Boltzmann law. Um, it goes sigma a t to the fourth, where I don't forget what uh, a is. So maybe I can rewrite it so I can say uh, luminosity then is, uh, let's see, a, remember, is 4 pi r squared. So I can say it's 4 pi r squared. I'll just put this a in front times sigma times t to the fourth. And if I'm looking for the radius, that's what I want to focus on is this piece right here. Then I want to get rid of everything else. That means to get r squared on its own, I got a, uh, it'll be l divided by 4 times pi times sigma times uh, t to the fourth. So I'll write that down. So that means r squared equals what's l over 4 pi sigma t to the fourth. Well, therefore, uh, I can just say r is the square root of that. Technically, you should do plus or minus the square root, but because uh, we consider you know distances to be positive, we'll just use the positive version here. All right, so let me just put in all my numbers then. So that means, let's see, luminosity is going to be, uh, let's go back here, is 25.4 times 3.85 times 10 to the 26. So this is the luminosity, at least, of the sun times the luminosity of Sirius. It tells you it's 25 times more luminous than our sun. All that divided by 4 times pi times sigma, which is 5.67, that's just a constant, times 10 to the minus 8. I always remember because it, it goes 5, 6, 7, 8 almost, except it's a minus. All that times the temperature to the fourth. Remember the temperature here, the 9965.6, let's just say. 9965.6, but you have to keep going with all the decimals if you can, to the fourth. And don't forget to square root that. Maybe I'll erase this and give myself a little bit of space here. I'll just be cheap and go like this. Boom. All right, so how do I actually do this? I'll just do this on my calculator. So I'm going to do, all right, I need the square root of, let's see. Oh, I didn't want that one, actually. I wanted uh, my mistake here, sorry, this one here. And I want to do a fraction. And I'm going to just say 25.4 times, let's see, 3.85 times 10 to the 26, that's my luminosity on the top, divide that by 4 times pi times, uh, let's see, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8, all that times, maybe I'll put brackets here, and here I'll just say answer, because then it keeps all the decimals here, but I want the answer to the power of 4. So now I get this answer, so 1.1796 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so it's uh, this big number here with lots of decimals times 10 to the 9 meters. Well, if I wanted to do it to three significant figures, which is what I should be using because i got 3, 3, and 3 here, then I'll say it's uh, 1.18, let's just say. So 1.18 times 10 to the 9 meters. Now, that's how you could say it. You could also say it in kilometers if you want. This is like, you know, one million kilometers if you want, because you take away um, the kilometers would, would reduce this number by three, so you'd have 10 to the six. So you'd have like, it's about one million kilometers. I mean, there's lots of ways you could uh, present it, but I think it's just, it's okay to just do it like this here. So 1.18 times 10 to the nine meters. I think this is like just a little bit, only a little bit bigger than the size of the sun. So I thought it might be a good idea to compare this right here with what we uh, have on an HR diagram. So if you look at this right here, we can find the star Sirius actually is right here. And let's take a look at where it sort of sits on this HR diagram. It sits sort of like somewhere here. And I guess we could say it's, you know, somewhere over here, I'm just bad at drawing, but I think you can get the idea. And if you look, does this really make sense? Well, what is its surface temperature? Didn't we calculate it, it was like 9,000 Kelvin, something like that, 9,000 Kelvin. Look at that, over here it's like, this is logarithmic. This is, yeah, it's a past nine, so that's right. At least it's reasonable. Over here, if you look at this right here, these are how many times more luminous than the sun is it? It's 10 times more, 100 times more, and we said it was 25 times more, so that actually seems about right. What I like is interesting is we're also calculating the radius of this thing right here. Well, it turns out uh, this is roughly, what is it, 1.7 times the radius of the sun. So if you look up, you know, the radius of the sun, this is about 1.7 times that.
Well, what does that mean? Well, if you look at these different lines of constant uh, radius, do you notice this is solar radius here? So this is place of constant. This is a hundred times, you know, the radius of the sun. This right here is uh, 10 times the radius of the sun. And this is one times the radius of the sun. So if you look at this, it's between one and 10 times, you know, the size of the sun. So that makes sense. If it's 1.7, sure, that's a, you know, at least it's reasonable. So to see how it's kind of fun to see this all in the context of an HR diagram, where this is where Sirius is located. Whereas our sun, for example, is just over here. So it's not that huge of a difference. Our sun is a little bit cooler. It's a little bit less luminous than this one here. But size-wise, they're fairly close to the same size. Well, I mean, I guess not. It's close to double the size of our sun, but still. At least uh, on grand scale of things, it's not like a thousand times bigger, for example, like Betelgeuse might be. <laughs> so there we go. So uh, we've seen an example then of how to calculate uh, this radius of a star. And we've also seen uh, how to use Wien's displacement law here in order to um, use the peak wavelength here to get the surface temperature of the star.